In this video, we show an integration demo between MicroRAS, a robotic solution for embedded system, and MoveIt2, a manipulation framework for robotic applications. MicroRAS puts ROS2 on microcontrollers thanks to its client-server architecture. Clients are lightweight entities that run into the microcontrollers, while agents are entities that bridge the clients with the ROS2 ecosystem. This allows topics to be exchanged between standard ROS nodes running on the computer and ROS nodes running into the embedded devices. The board that we employ in this demo is an ST development IoT kit, and we use the Zephyr RTOS to run the MicroROS client on top of it. Using this board is especially appealing for this demo as it exhibits a lot of nice and useful features. First of all, we have the chip, a 32 bits microcontroller with 1 megabyte flash and 128 kilobytes RAM memory. This is the hardware piece that is actually running the RTOS and the MicroROS app. The board offers several peripherals to communicate the microchip with the external world, and in this demo we make use of the serial port shown here to communicate the chip with the system running the agent, which in this case is a Linux computer. Beyond that, the board also offers general-purpose input-output pins that enable the users to interact with it. The specific button that you can see here is the one that triggers the publication to the ROS2 world. The ST Discovery IoT board also exposes a lot of sensors, ranging from temperature humidity sensors to a magnetometer. For this specific demo, we are interested in a 6 degree of freedom inertial measurement unit composed of an accelerometer and a gyroscope and a 3 degrees of freedom magnetometer. The combination of these sensors measures the specific force angular velocity and relative orientation of the board when it is being moved with respect to a given reference frame. These data are merged and packaged by means of the so-called sensor fusion that allows encapsulating the relevant information regarding the body position and orientation in what is its quaternion attitude or pose. So, let's now try and understand what's going on in the agent side, keeping in mind that the agent is running on a conventional Linux platform on the computer. By executing this simple line of bash code in our terminal, we have a MicroROS agent up and running, ready to be put into communication with one or more MicroROS clients via serial transport. In this screen record, we see what happens when the client is sending data to an enabled agent. A session is established, and the terminal shows the sensor fusion data while they are being sent by the client and correctly received by the agent. We can now focus on the final part of this demo, that is, the interaction of our MicroROS node with the ROS2 ecosystem. Once the agent receives the post-quaternion collected by the inertial measurement unit of the board, it sends it in the form of a ROS2 topic to the ROS2 world. Once this topic is in the ROS2 global data space, the data can be consumed by ROS2 nodes and applications built on top of the ROS2 user API. The applications that we consider in this demo are RVs, a 3D visualization tool designed to function with ROS, and Movie 2. Movie 2 is a user-friendly and open-source platform for robotics manipulation and kinematic planification over the low-level framework provided by ROS2. This video shows in the bigger screen the complete demo in the 3D space managed by RVs, and in the smaller image the real-time displacement and position of the board. The arrow displays the board position and orientation in space, while the robotic arm represents the standard integration robot used in the movie tutorials and the graphic interfaces. To enable it, Movie 2 receives a topic each time the user's button is clicked, which triggers the program's retrieval of the last post message received, which is then used to calculate the movement that the virtual arm has to perform to reach out to the board. The resulting movement is then integrated into RVs, so as to enable it to represent first the movement planning, which is the ghost-like representation of the arm that precedes the proper displacement, and then the arm's actual movement.